I'm Cheryl. And I'm Naima. We're Three Black Moms. Hi. I was about six when I almost saw the tooth fairy. Somehow there was this conversation with the bigger kids in the apartment complex calling us younger ones babies because we still believed in the tooth fairy. And whenever any one of my friends lost a tooth, we were sure to share the treats that came from turning that tooth into the tooth fairy and getting money back from under your pillow. Well, I was about to lose a tooth and my friends Kitty and Vivian have been discussing it for days now. And Vivian told me, you have to stay up to see the tooth fairy and this will shut the mouths of all those people that are calling us babies. So my tooth came out, I put it under the sheet on, on my bed under, under the pillow and uh, dutifully went to bed and I was determined to stay awake and see the tooth fairy. I kind of dozed off and then I heard the flutter of her wings coming into my bedroom and I was so scared. I closed my eyes even tighter and wouldn't look and I heard the jingling of coins flying through the air and under my pillow and Ooh, I was really excited, but I, I was too scared to look. In the morning, there was 10 pennies under my pillow. And I went and I told my friends, Kitty and Vivian, how I'd almost seen her. I heard her come. I heard her leave the money. It was glorious. And that's how we held on to that wonderful experience of almost seeing the tooth fairy. Now, sisters, this is something that is a, a childhood memory that kids have, their visit to Santa Claus, the treats and the eggs at Easter with the Easter bunny. And my question is, we have this thing of helping our kids build their imaginations when is the time to tell them that this is fantasy? <laughs> well, at what age did you find out that that wasn't the tooth fairy that left your money? How old were you? <laughs> you know, I honestly don't remember. I don't well, remember. There was not like this transition, like one day, okay, I'm the one leaving you that money. I don't remember ever that. Do you? <laughs> No, but I, I remember that mama told us a story about Barbara that one time when I lost a tooth and she was at work, so she didn't know, but I put the, the tooth underneath, I think the sheet, because we used to not have pillows. And mama right, didn't believe in pillows. Yeah, no, might. mama said it would make your neck crooked. Oh. So anyway, so I put the tooth under there, but because mama was working, she didn't know I lost a tooth. But Barbara gave me 10 pennies. Barbara put found 10 pennies that she put under there for the tooth fairy. Now, Barbara doesn't remember that. So apparently, and she's four years older. So apparently I was at least six when you start losing your teeth. Mm -hmm. And so she would have been old enough to know that there was no tooth fairy, but became my tooth fairy. Oh, and that's, that and so I don't sweet. remember it, but mama told me that story. That is so, so sweet. Yeah, I know. You were so nice to me back then, that day. So, <laughs> that one time. <laughs> that one time. So it's funny because now, you know, we've gone back and forth. And, you know, I'm I'm like the last one to have a child. So you all have millennial children, but I have a generation z -er. And a lot of times, you know, but we grew up in a time where some people were saying, oh, no, you don't teach your kids that kind of stuff because then they'll lie to you or they'll be upset that you lied to them. But I remember figuring out Santa Claus on my own when I realized as I got older that Santa Claus's handwriting was exactly the same as Mama's. And it was OK. And I don't know oh, when. Do you remember? Huh? 
Um, you're quite the detective. You mean on the uh, name tags where it was on signed? On the name tags Santa? where it would say Santa Claus. But it looked just like Mama's writing. Um, so I must have been 10, 11 maybe, maybe younger. I don't know. But well, remember when Santa Claus came to our house? That's one of my earlier memories. But it was an early memory because of you. Because I don't know, was Doreen even born then? She wasn't born yet. Okay. So that would be Naima. Sorry. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, um, but I remember you saying that it wasn't the real Santa Claus because he was wearing shoes and not boots. That's what what do you have gym shoes on or something? <laughs> Just know. regular man shoes. You oh. and you know, kids, they got their daddies. little they've got their little idea of what it looks like from cartoons and books. Oh, he didn't have on boots, can't be Santa. <laughs> so that I remember Barbara saying that. So I would have been four, maybe four. So those are the things, but I remember when Sarah was little, and of course, we had the tooth fairy and the Easter bunny. And even when Sarah lost a tooth and we couldn't find it, you know, her father emailed the, the, the tooth fairy and told and told her what happened. So she still got the money. Um, <laughs> so the tooth, yeah, the tooth fairy went through the internet too. Um <laughs> How much is the tooth fairy giving up these days? I don't know because she she I don't think she ever got more than did she get a dollar maybe? You don't even give dimes anymore, pennies. Nobody gives dimes. People are talking about five dollars and stuff people like that. People don't give giving. change anymore. It's like paper I said, money. No, yeah, I used to give her. I think she used to get a dollar. But let me tell you something. I'm not giving a kid five dollars unless it's, that tooth got a, got gold in it because it's just <laughs> it's like give me a break and they were talking about oh your tooth fairy is so cheap it's like, well, you know, they're kids. what are they gonna do what what My are they gonna do with their is money? working hard yeah <laughs> two jobs <laughs> so so the the sum that up i don't think it's the worst thing that for us to do to give our chi our children a sense of wonder yeah and i grew up uh, and and when i went to i remember uh working at when i worked at the globe and there were guys who had little kids and all those kids are grown now but all those kids they would not only they would go out and they throw like uh the uh stems of the carrots out in their driveway so that people would think that the reindeer had come and eaten the carrots and oh wow all these, you know so people would really get into that because you know what life is really short for kids they're going to be young for such a short time and they've got the rest of their lives to be old and cynical so let them have the fantasy while they can even though sometimes it costs you like the hundred dollar American girl dolls that were brought by Santa Claus. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that uh I'm trying to remember if Santa brought those or if that was the time that it came out that uh somebody bigger than Santa was <laughs> for those dolls. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to remember. I don't know if it was because I was the last born or whatever. It wasn't that I didn't have an imagination, but I always knew it was a joke. I just always knew it was just a joke. I always knew there was no Santa Claus. I always knew there was no tooth fairy. I always knew there was no Easter bunny. I just always knew. And I think maybe because I was the last born, just, you know, by that time you all already knew. So I knew and nobody- well, we didn't spoil it for you, did we? we I, didn't I, just, it for you. I just always knew it was the family joke. I just. I mean, it was okay. It was funny, but I I, I never believed in those things because I just always knew it was just a fun joke that we did. And but it's kind of because by the time you all, by the time I came along, you all already knew, and so nobody was really pretending anymore. And I guess nobody. I mean, it was like the stuff would still say Santa Claus on it. Yeah, though. but yeah. I, I knew it was mom and daddy. You know. <laughs> but you know, I think part of that is like suspended disbelief i don't even know if that's a thing where you kind of know but you kind of don't know and you play along with the whole 
mystery and the fun of it. Because when you're really young, you really do believe that. And then somewhere gradually you realize that, uh, oh, Santa and the Easter Bunny and uh, all the rest are really my parents. And I think- Something in me just never did. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's because I was the last born by the time I grew up, nobody was pretending to believe it anymore because you all had outgrown it. So I think I was just- I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we didn't have a sit down talk. They sat us down in no. the room and said, okay, and usually there's kids no don't. Santa, there's no Easter bunny. And uh, it's, it's us with our two jobs. Yeah. Fine, all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I just always knew. And I think a lot of things might have there's been. There's no tooth fairy. Because I, I, <laughs> I just think a lot of things are different for me because of, of my, the birth order. Because of the birth order, yeah. And, you know, they're just kind of tired of doing it by the time I came along. So <laughs> I don't know. I just, I mean, I, I was still fun, but there was just never. And you still got the stuff that you asked for. Stuff, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, I just, I just always knew, you know, and I think we grew up watching what was that miracle on 34th street and all of yeah. that. I love that one. The original yeah. somewhere. And when yeah. my kids were growing up, we actually told them the story of the real St. Nicholas where that came from, how the whole gift giving thing got started. Cause I think some people are afraid to let their kids have an imagination and believe in things that aren't true, but are, it's just part of fun childhood to me. But I think some people are afraid if I have my kid believing all this stuff that's not real, then when it's time to them, for them to understand a relationship with God, they're not going to believe God exists either because didn't I lie about the tooth fairy? Didn't I lie about Santa Claus? Didn't I lie about the Easter Bunny? So what makes me want to believe that God is real? And I think that's a real fear that some, some parents really struggle with. They won't tell you that out loud unless you pin them down and have a conversation. But I think that's why some people just want to say all of it is fake. Well, and I don't know what what happens. Like, oh, have you ever run into anybody like that? Well, I think what happens when you kind of mesh it all together and then you start talking about God, and then I think what happens is a child visualizes God as somehow, you know, uh, uh, looking like Santa Claus, sort of like, you know, man in the sky with a beard, you know, white beard and everything. I mean, it's so yeah. when, when you when you put it all together and a child is like two or three, then everything sort of gets smushed together. And that's just how they exactly, visualize God. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and I th and I think you know, and I don't think because I mean Sarah until she was you know well by the time she was a teenager or even younger by the time she was in middle school she had stopped going to church, but she started she was going to church every Sunday since she was five weeks old, mm -hmm. so that was different for her than and learning about you know Christianity was different for her than thinking about Santa Claus and. And thinking about the Easter Bunny, and when she got old enough to ask, well, you know, what about Santa? I says, I believe in the spirit. And this is true. I still do. I believe in the spirit of Santa Claus, of someone coming and being selfless and giving gifts because they care about you. That's different from saying, yeah, and that's and that's a way of saying without, because that's, that's really what it is about is the spirit is not just being mercenary it's the spirit of giving and and of of love and so yeah. if you tell them that way it's not that terrible you know obviously they know that bunnies don't lay eggs so you know they know that 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 kind of stuff is silly but but the thing is is that if you if you can teach them to embrace the spirit of giving and of love it doesn't matter what form that takes if it takes you know jesus if it takes you know because a lot of very um people who are atheists don't believe in god but they still believe in complete love and and utter love so it depends on what you're trying to teach your child now by the time sarah was 12 years old she was way past the Santa Claus, but her sixth grade teacher, probably because he still had, 
younger kids kids. had them writing letters to Santa Claus. And I thought, you know what? She's 12. She knows there's no, or she was 11, I guess. She was 11. All of them. By the time you're writing, you kind of know. I would. Yeah, you you know. I mean, she she had also gotten, you know, letters from Santa Claus because, like I said, everything's on the internet where you could, you know, have them say, oh, you know, hello, Sarah. Yeah, you asked for such and such, you know. Well, see, that's the difference, too, because your child was kind of raised with the Internet more than ours were. Yeah, the Internet was just coming into focus when uh, John and Lorelai and Lavinia were young. It was just, I just started, you know, like in the 90s. I will say that one thing that really helped sort of the nest that was when my kids were older, they started doing things like, saving money to give to buy a chicken or a goat to someone in a third world country and that would be a gift and they would know that they are being like santa claus to these children and these kind of gifts are going to save these kids lives because they live in a poor country where they don't have enough food they don't have clean water so it was the beginning of them understanding the whole compassionate feeling about you have more, you have more than enough, you are very blessed, you need to be willing to give and to give out of your own earnings, not mom and dad giving you money and then you give it. No, this is something that you have worked for so that you can take part in that feeling of compassion. I think at a young age and even writing a letter to one of the uh, children that we supported through compassion, I think that sort of helped them kind of grow out of the fantasy mode and really understand the nature of giving. And that's the thing now, when Sarah was in Sunday school, like I said, she started, well, she was going to Sunday school and I was teaching Sunday school. I mean, she was just learning to walk. So she was what, a year old. And, you know, cause I was bringing her every, every, uh, every week and there were older kids. And mm-hmm. what we used to do was we used to do toys for tots. The church would, yeah. would would donate money and we would take the kids and the kids would actually go to Walmart and they would buy, uh, you know, toys for, for kids. They grow up, they went in teams and nobody got like really crazy. Like, oh no, I want this. I want this because they understood this was for other children. And so they would buy the things that they would like for other children. So they learned about the whole gift giving spirit and, and the spirit of giving to other people, not just, you know, uh, underserved or whatever, like looking down, it wasn't just about the charity. It was about these, we have what we need and now you know we are going to give give back to other people so it was yeah. fun and we used to do that every single uh christmas for i don't know how many years and it was really nice and then we go and drop them off at the you know state state police take a nice picture and then their reward would be that they would get to see their pictures in the newspaper but but that's the thing and 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 anytime you teach what what these what these entities are supposed to teach you are um, that they're that of love. Now, with the tooth fairy, let me tell you, I'm full confession. I still have a baby tooth that never came out. Should that tooth come out, I'm putting it under my pillow, and I expect some big bucks for it because I am in my sixties <laughs> with a, with, with, and I don't care who the tooth fairy is, but somebody's giving me some money. No. <laughs> need to add some interest on there from from the time it would have came exactly out. <laughs> exactly so, <laughs> so you sound way too much like lavinia who at the age of 10 or 11 said oh uh the tooth fairy owes me some money and came to me with a list of teeth that had been missed and so she added up to like 50 dollars and i was rolling my eyes and laughing her? because she was serious how, how much are you giving her a tooth? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying somehow no, one day no. she came to me and said, oh, you know, a couple of times I did not get my money from the tooth fairy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help you. You snooze, you lose. No, no. <laughs> Statute of limitations, you get nothing. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, I, I think it is important, though, to, to teach the 
philosophy of, of giving, however you do it, that's really the goal. Because, you know, uh, Zakia used to come with me and, and a friend of ours. We would go every Friday, uh, right before our Friday services at the mosque, we would go and hand out sandwiches to the homeless around the city. And there were a lot of them. So we would go make sandwiches and then we'd hand them out. And Zakia was with me. And so she kind of learned about, you know, sharing and giving everything. And then uh, then we sometimes we'd take bags of clothes and we'd, we'd give out some clothing and things like that. So she she saw that. And then later on, she even uh, came up with a, a charitable um, organization, Taste Not Waste, where you would take food that maybe was going to be thrown out at a banquet or something like that. And, and rather than them throw it out, because, you know, they they serve it and it doesn't get eaten, they got to throw it out. But if yeah. it's not been touched, then we package it up in these to-go containers and give it to the homeless. So we've done that a few times. So I think she got the spirit of it. And that was the whole thing. And, and you know, for the most part, I mean, even though we didn't necessarily celebrate Christmas in our home or Easter in our home, but downstairs, because we, we live in a two-story family home, and my brother-in-law, he is the biggest child-observing uh, holiday person ever. I mean, he goes all out. So she'd go down there and through him, she she experienced everything. She, you know, whether it was uh, decorating a tree for Christmas or uh, boiling and, and coloring Easter eggs for Easter or putting together candy for Halloween. I mean, he, he just went all out for all the holidays. So through him, she just got that whole childhood experience. And but, she got a double dose because when she came to our house, we did the same thing. Yeah. She got an Easter basket. She got to do the eggs. She got the candy. And yes. uh, I read no the stories. Word. And uh, because I it's think about our children tradition. had a rich childhood. Yeah. And that's the thing. You want them to have fun during childhood. Of course, you know, she never believed in any of it because we didn't teach that. But she experienced the fun of it, which was the whole point. And then she, yeah. got, the, she got the experience of giving to those who who would appreciate, you know, a sharing, and and you know, so funny. A lot of the people who had been homeless at that time, years later, I'd see them and they'd ask about her because everybody remembered Zaki, the happy little girl that I that, that I had with me. So that is so sweet. You know, <laughs> that is so, really sweet. Yeah. So they remember, remember your kids. Yeah. They, How's that little baby doing? Oh, she about this tall now. <laughs> that baby wears her shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but you know, it was a good experience for her and just understanding that you should share, you should give. And that's really what we want children to understand and basically to pass on whatever tradition you follow, pass on the spirit of it. So, so yeah. what would you, what would you tell parents they should follow in terms of what age, if they're going to do this, what age should they kind of let the child know, okay, this was just all in fun. What age would you would you say? I would say, wait, you know, I don't know if there's an age because some kids figure it out at six and some kids are still hoping at, at 12. I remember one of my brothers-in-law says, if, if what did he used to tell his kids? Because he had three and he says, if you don't believe, you don't receive. So, you know... <laughs> So they're all I believe, I believe, so, I believe. <laughs> so, yeah, so I so I believe they, they probably still believe in Santa Claus. So, you know, even though they're like in their 20s. Uh, <laughs> but but I think at some point, I think if you could always wait until they start to ask them, ask about it, because they are, you know, they're they're smart kids and some of them figure it out. And I don't think, I mean, maybe some kids feel betrayed. I never asked asked Sarah if she felt betrayed. I just, because I, I think if you tell them something like, well, I believe in the spirit that this brings and this is what this means. And yes, we have been doing the, the work, you know, and we have been giving it to you, but we give it in the spirit of knowing that, you know, there's a big world out there and a lot of people love you and a lot of people love each other. And this is one of the ways we show. And then you don't, you know, so you're not saying, yeah, we've been lying to you. So what, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it is important how you say it is important yeah well we've got to go but of course we want to remind you all to make sure you follow
did she block us? Where'd she go? And we will see you next time. I'm Naima. I'm Cheryl. I'm Barbara. We are three black moms. Bye. 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 Bye.